Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for reminding me that uh, my wife will never accept how well I can speak Chinese. Uh, so I'm going to start today by talking about who am I. I understand that's busy. Uh, that's very boring. So let me get through it quickly. And then we'll get to the important stuff here, which is like decentralization. I know we're competing with an open bar, and Aurora is a really tough act to follow. So I'm going to make this entertaining. We've got a modest crowd here. So I spent five years on what I like to call the dark side. And what that means is basically I sold shit to banks and helped them get more money. And if there's anyone out there that needs more money, it's banks, right? We all love banks getting more money. So um, what I did was I worked with a technology startup in Pittsburgh. We worked on uh, technology with credit cards in uh, EMV and a bunch of boring stuff that at the time I thought was very cutting edge. Uh, I went on to realize that Credit cards are not cutting edge, they're not even interesting. And uh, from there I went on, I partnered with a Chinese investor and some people in the Chinese community to build a QR payments company. If anyone here is familiar with the Chinese community and how they make payments, Alipay, uh, WeChat, they're all very QR focused. And uh, even though I liked that and we built an awesome platform, it was very hyper-local hyper to Pittsburgh, um, I realized that there was still that key component missing, which is the decentralization, the reason that we're all here. So. Uh, I'm sometimes seen on everything EOS, so here's my qualifiers. There's me and Zach Gall. Uh, I also worked with PK to develop the, uh, I'm not to develop, to deliver the EOS IO developer courses. PK is right over there. If you're a developer, you want to get involved in EOS, uh, I highly advise either checking out the course or bother him because he's supposed to come out with some new episodes, some new lessons, and uh, he's dragging his feet, so go find him and bother him about that. But I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm here to talk about this. So I'm going to ask a really stupid question, but in the audience, raise your hand if you own cryptocurrency. Okay. I think even Aurora has her hand up. Uh, raise your hand if you would like to see cryptocurrency reach mass adoption. Great. So we're all on the same page. We are here. We are Mario. And we are trying to get over there to mass adoption, the mass adoption castle. Uh, right now, this looks pretty easy. Like, this map is probably, they wouldn't even publish this on Mario because you just tap A and it's like, dude, you're in the castle. Um, but there's a few challenges that we need to overcome first. First of all, cultural acceptance is this underlying pit of lava that if we don't overcome it, we're never going to get to mass adoption. Second, we have legacy infrastructure. And legacy infrastructure is like that shell in Super Mario when you jump on the shell and you think it's dead, but then it goes away and it hits an enemy and then it comes back into the screen and then it kills you. That's like integrating with legacy infrastructure. It's the most pain in the ass thing to deal with with cryptocurrency and it's the most pain in the ass Mario villain. Then we have disinformation. These people are dressed up in the Mario hat. We think they're coiners, but really, we don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're scammers. Maybe they're just spreading the wrong information. They're basically just Goombas. And you know, we know who they are. We're not going to mention any names. Next, we have regulators. And these regulators come in, and they basically, you know, they've got their finger on the nuclear button. They could come in, and they could destroy everything. Um, we saw Mark Zuckerberg. He was on Capitol Hill a couple times now. And I was surprised to see that some of the regulators, um, they knew about cryptocurrency. And a uh, big shout out to, to Meltem Demirs. She was like my hero for months after that, uh, going in there and, and pumping Bitcoin to all the regulators and to Congress. I really appreciated that. Um, but there's still regulators that really don't know what's going on. And then last but not least, <clears throat> we've got everybody's favorite. It's the banks and they're guarding all the coins. It's Bowser's castle. They've got all our money. So this is, this is looking like a challenge. This isn't as easy as just tapping A anymore. So what do we need to do to raise that flag of mass adoption, to get from one side to the other? <clears throat> and I bring up a quote here. This is by uh, my friend Mark Stair. If you're not familiar with Mark, he built uh, Tippet Bot. We actually worked with him at the San Francisco Hackathon uh, for EOS. He, um, Tippet IO, I told him I'd give him a quick shout out. Basically an easy way to tip your friends on Twitter, on um, Discord, and Telegram. I almost forgot about Telegram. How could I? Um, so shout out to Mark Stair, but let me just read this quote really quickly. The crypto and EOS community needs to build threads across the chasm so bridges can be built. In old days, someone would bow and arrow a rope across a river and use that as the beginning of the bridge building. And I love this word threads because I don't think we're ever going to just jump. We're never going to just double tap A and get to that mass adoption castle. We need to build these threads and we need people to 
die in the lava of cultural acceptance and we need people to get hit by the shell of, um, of legacy systems. But these threads are very important and today I'm gonna to talk about one of these threads. But first I think it's important for us to realize why is Bowser guarding the castle? And if Bowser's the banks and a lot of third parties, why not only is he guarding the castle, but why are they trying to expand that castle and bring more people in? And they always use this quote, uh, the unbanked, let's bring in the unbanked. So I come from a credit card background. Let me just run through this. Uh, some of you might be familiar with this, but this is what happens when you slide your credit card at a POS terminal at a merchant. This is how many parties are actually involved with that transaction. So we've got you with your credit card. Then we have POS tech, that stands for point of sale, get your head out of the gutter. We've got the merchant, and the merchant, they are, um, they're awesome, you know, that's who we want to interact with. But then on the back end, we've got a processor, we've got banks, we've got more than one banks, we've got uh, credit card networks, which are my absolute favorite. Um, and all of these people have their hand in the cookie jar at some point. And that's why they want to bring more people into the system, because it's more money for them, and it's more ways to bring people into these legacy systems. But if we compare this to what blockchain can do, we start to eliminate a lot of these third parties. So this would be a transaction with blockchain. There's only two parties, you and the merchant. Now some people of course will argue, well, there's a whole infrastructure, there's you know, the EOSIO, um, they're kind of acting as a processor. And I understand that, but especially with EOS, um, you're part of that infrastructure as well. A lot of people vote, they're staking to those nodes or to those block producers. Um, so this is really what it looks like on a, a transaction on blockchain. And you don't even need a credit card. This is a quote by Vinny Lingham I like to throw in here. 2009, I like this so much that I actually liked it on Twitter. You can see on the screenshot there. 2009, how do we bank the unbanked? That was the question. That was like what I worked on for years was like, how can we give bank accounts and credit cards to people in Africa because like all we need is more money. And it was very evil. That's why I put Darth Vader up there to represent myself at one point. Um, but 2019, it should be how do we unbank the banked? And I thought that was such a cool quote and that was like really impactful to me is because we finally have the technology to be able to do that in a secure way. And I think that this really needs to be the goal um, and this is like the, the, the change that we can see. So here we are, we're Super Mario. Everybody in the audience, you guys don't have cryptocurrency, right? You came in late. <clears throat> Here's our favorite coin. It can be uh, Bitcoin, we'll just say it's um, EOS for today's purposes. And here are the th certain things that we can spend our money on. So remember back to that quote was the threads um, that you're shooting that bow and arrow across that chasm, crossing that chasm. And with the, a couple of these categories, the first one, you know, you see the, the Chanel, the Starbucks, there are some threads being built. I just downloaded spend or sped in or however they want to pronounce it. And they are shooting threads across, but with things like healthcare, with things like education, um, I don't know why I put a toilet there. I must not have been able to find the house icon that was supposed to be real estate. Um, but there are certain things that you just can't spend crypto on. And why is that? Because if we look behind these, it's people. People are, the, are working. People are the employees on the other side of these businesses. And the thing that's crazy about that is some of these people are actually us. They're actually coiners, right? They're, ho they're hodlers, they're developers, they're whatever. And we end up with this. We end up with you, you have crypto, you go to do a transaction, you send them fiat, whatever it is, whatever merchant it is, they give fiat to their employee, who's also a person that holds crypto, but crypto never changed hands, it's just fiat. So we want to eliminate this process. Business Insider, labor accounts for 60% of corporate expenses and it's only getting more expensive. Damn you laborers for being so expensive. <clears throat> this is the part where I start chilling the company, so if you want to leave, this is a good time, I'm going to make it super quick. Uh, my company, Dabian, is founded with uh, both Peter Kay and Zach Gall. We've got amazing EOS development talent. We're working really closely with Carbon and a company that has about 30,000 independent contractors on their payroll. They're an industry leader in their segment. And what we're doing is we're integrating all of those people who come from different backgrounds, different bank accounts, different countries, and we're integrating them into a way where they can easily choose whether they are going to accept crypto or accept Carbon, or uh, accept crypto or accept fiat, rather. And it's one of those threads that we can shoot across the chasm and hope to be able to build a bridge on top of. It's a hybrid solution. So that we can eventually <clears throat> get rid of that fiat in this process and we can make the Mario map look like that. 
So if you're interested, this is all the stuff we do, big time shill, shill, shill. Uh, and if you want to get in touch with us, head over to dappiness.io or come up to Peter and I and talk to us. We'll be happy to talk about anything. So thank you. <laughs>